Hello, I'm Kedar Soman from Plugin India, and this is a part of a new series what we have called Electric Vehicles and Environmental Consciousness. Uh, today we are going to talk about how electric vehicles can reduce use of fossil fuel and why that is important. So, if you're a car owner or a two-wheeler owner, and if you're driving car or two-wheeler or truck that is using petrol, diesel, or CNG, all, all these types of fuels, you're using fossil fuels. Uh, what exactly is a fossil fuel? For millions and millions of years, all the plants and animals that died, you know, the earth was churning and all those dead animals and plants got buried deep inside and they were highly pro compressed and they were heated, all those remains, and that transformed their hydrocarbon chains and that turned them into kind of a fuel that is extracted today by all these, uh, you know, in the Middle East countries or wherever we see the oil extraction. It is refined and that's how our uh, vehicle fuel comes. Is it really bad? Why is it bad? And what can we do about it? One thing is, if it is burned in moderate amounts, you know, it's, it's not bad. When it is burned, it emits some dangerous pollut polluting gases like carbon dioxide, carbon monoxide, sulfur dioxide, nitrogen oxides. When these gases are present in small amounts, that is fine. You know, in Earth's atmosphere, uh, we can take small amounts without hurting the rest of the animals and uh, plants. But when the whole world starts burning fossil fuels at dangerously high rates like we are doing today, it starts becoming a problem. Do you know, as of right now, the whole world is burning approximately 100 million barrels of fossil fuels per day. Yes, we are burning a large amount of fossil fuels per day. Is it causing any problem? Are there any signs? Uh, let's just take an example of carbon dioxide levels. Scientists have measured these uh, carbon dioxide levels in atmosphere and they have been able to measure this for a long period, period stretching back. Using the ice layers in Antarctica, they were able to actually get a very good guess at how much the carbon dioxide in atmosphere was, let's say before 50,000 years, 100,000 years, a million years back from now. And for a long, most of the time, the carbon dioxide level in uh, atmosphere was somewhere like mostly below 150 ppm, that is parts per million. Uh, occasionally, the level would rise up when there were large forest fires or volcanic, volcanic eruptions or something like that. But eventually, the level would go down. Then, in around 1800s, industrial revolution happened. The whole world started cutting down trees like crazy and burning all these fuels from coal to petrol to all these things in a large amount slowly. And that usage just steadily increased and we also saw the amount of carbon dioxide steadily increase. Uh, as of today, it has already crossed 400, and, uh, 400 ppm, that is 400 particles per million. Is it dangerous? Is it showing any problems? Yes, it is. According to many scientists, this high level of polluting gases are creating what is called greenhouse effect and, you know, it is uh, causing global warming. It is ending up in our planet getting heating up. Whatever the energy comes from sun, you know, that energy is also dissipated away from Earth. But because of change of this environmental mixture, the heat that stays on Earth is more. As a result, the planet is getting heated. And the heat, if the average temperature of the planet goes above 2 degrees Celsius, what can happen? 2 degrees Celsius, when you just think about it, it doesn't sound that much, right? Like from, let's say, 26 to 28 degrees Celsius or 33 to 35. Yes, you'll have to turn on the air conditioner a little more. No, it's not just that. The consequences of 2 degrees Celsius temperature change in atmosphere can be far beyond that and can be far more catastrophic. It can result in change in pattern of undersea currents. It can result in change of wind patterns. It can result in change of rain patterns and predictability of atmosphere. As a result, the crop yields might change. As a result, the water supply, water availability might change and it can have a catastrophic consequences on human civilization. So what can we do about this? You know, we have to drive, we have to get up our house, and we have to do things, right? Uh, we have to use our vehicle, yes. In past, we did not have a choice. We had to use fossil fuel. 
because there was nothing that even came close to that when it came to you know being having a usable vehicle now we do have a choice now we have electric vehicles that are more or less you know to a large extent that are very functional vehicles and if we start using electric vehicles we can significantly cut down the usage of fossil fuels almost 60% fossil fuel that is extracted from earth goes into transportation sector and not having not using this fossil fuel can make a huge difference now some cities and some areas which have started using a lot of electric vehicles are already seeing some difference then you know as the grid continues to become greener as the fraction of energy that comes from environmentally friendly sources like solar like wind like hydrothermal so and hydroelectric like uh, thermal geothermal not thermal because that is coal uh, that increases uh, you know any vehicle that you drive on electric uh, power will be significantly environmentally friendly there are studies that show that even vehicles that run on electricity generated from coal emit less uh, polluting gases per kilometer of driving compared to the vehicle running on fossil fuels and there is some debate in that area but more or less electric vehicle almost always is either similar or very much same or significantly greener option to drive we frequently hear a lot of uh, uh, reasons people give for not using electric vehicles like inconvenience and we understand to some extent you know it does need some changes but we also really want you to think about this how about inconvenience you will face when the food prices will rise let's say 500% from where they are today because of shifting rain, shifting rain patterns because the farmers really cannot uh, uh, get enough yields or the yields become really unpredictable or what if lot of geopolitical problems are caused because mass migrations happening because of droughts and famines think about that you are going to see a lot of misinformation being spread on internet we have observed that as if there is some campaign going against electric vehicles you know a lot of people suspect that that might be part of almost like a campaign almost like a lobbying efforts by a lot of companies who have vested interest in keeping fossil fuels burning so what we really encourage you to do is do your own research do your own thinking and then make decision so come on join us let's just leave the fossil fuels where they belong be buried inside the earth and let's start driving electric let's work on keeping this earth clean and green with lots of trees and birds and lots of animals and let's leave a very beautiful clean and green world behind for future generations This video is made possible by Mahindra Electric. Mahindra Electric Mobility is the pioneer of electric vehicle technology in India. Their mission is to bring tomorrow's movement today. To find out more, please visit www.mahindraelectric.com.